Wonderful. I've, I've had the great pleasure today to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, Veronica Farmer, who is an intuitive healer. She's a cranial sacral therapist, an incredible meditation teacher and, and a sound therapist through her incredible vocals as well. Uh, so I've known Veronica probably for yeah, maybe close to 10 years now. And uh, yeah, I've got the great honor to bring Veronica to you today and um, dive into some of the incredible healing work that she does, but also some pointers for right now. So very warm welcome to you, Veronica. Thank you, darling. It's a real pleasure to touch base with you and see you. You know, we don't see each other that much, but when we do, it's, it's like home. And yeah. uh, it's lovely. And I think this is a really special time where we, uh, as things contract and, and are strange, we start to be more grateful about those beautiful moments, about those beautiful friendships, about why we love people. And we're much more comfortable to share that now, aren't we? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes, you're giving me goosebumps, Veronica. So yes, I totally agree everything you say. Um, so we had a little chat before, but um, Veronica is currently holding a lot of phone calls with people who um, are at the, very much the front line of um, the global challenges happening today. So um, Veronica, just if you can give us a bit of a, an indication, like what, what, what are people feeling? And you've got such empathetic ability, you, you really tap into a collective nervous system. So what are some of the things that you're noticing right now? I think there's, there's two areas of, the, of, of people that I'm working with. So I'm working with people in essential services. So uh, a lot of healthcare workers from, from doctors and nurses, ambulance drivers to pharmacists. Um, and they've got a kind of a, a unique feeling happening for them right now, which is um, a brave kind of courage um, of, oh, I've got to get out there now and, and do what I've come here to do. Um, there's also a discomfort and a, a, um, a little bit of ouch around leaving families. Also, um, a discomfort about what happens out in this big world if, if something happens to me or, or taking care of those I love. So there's a lot of very strong and ancient protective feelings, which is the, the obvious flow of what happens when cortisol goes in our body. Mm -hmm. One of the most ancient stress chemicals. It is telling your body a remembered collective story of there's a horde of barbarians, there's a plague, there's something coming. Um, and it fires through our body and it fires through our legs and our arms and gets our body moving. Uh, so that sort of courageous power is something that I'm seeing in healthcare workers and how I'm working to support them or essential people, whether they're in supermarkets or wherever, mm. uh, is to help them understand that they're using that energy in a beautiful way. At the same time, they must learn to come back to home. They must learn to come back to calm because when we can come back to that breath and calm and we're out of fight or flight, our body can come out of a contracted cortisol state and back into activating the blood flow through the body so that your immune system is on firstly mm. <laughs> and your, your cellular growth is all working the way it should. Because when we're scared and when we're in fight or flight, our body shuts down a lot of those key processes around health. Mm -hmm. around cell division, around immunity, around digestion, around hormonal health, mm -hmm. and even the way that our brain works. Mm -hmm. uh, so interestingly, something we're all seeing out there, so in the second group of people that I work with, is probably, you know, mums and dads now at home without work. Yeah. And a new reality. So what they're facing is grief, because they may have had a business that they had put their heart and soul into that was their baby for 10 years. And they're now going, wow. So I'm thrown into this grief, this universal grief, mm -hmm. uh, this fight or flight, this feeling of, of wanting to hunker down and, and a desperate search for food. Yeah. So these ancient feelings are there. And for them, it's about helping support them into getting back to a sense of cheeky beauty that's always been there anyway, underneath what they do and start to look at tools of noticing what their triggers are, whether they're angry or frustrated, mm -hmm. to notice what that feels like in the body, and then also coming back to that calm. Yeah. Um, the other area that, I, that I'm noticing is around the way we behave when we're scared. Yeah. 
And what happens in the body, and you know, physiologically in the body, is that we have this contraction of blood flow into arms and legs, our running away muscles or picking up a sword. Mm -hmm. But it also contracts the blood flow in the brain. Mm. It takes it away from the cerebral frontal cortex, which is our imagination, our ability to paint a mural, mm. to have delicious conversations, to love, to laugh, yeah. and puts all the blood flow into our grumpy unit in the back, which is our amygdala. Mm. Um, and this is our, Ugh, buy food, hunker down, don't waste. And we even lose the ability to remember our children's names. So, <laughs> you're seeing a bit of that out and about. People are less tolerant. They're more angry. And something that I suggest you do, because it may be you too, darlings, you know, and I'll give you a tool of how to calm that down in a moment. But the key thing to know is that you are something magnificent, beautiful, queenly or kingly behind this contracted self. There may be an element needed of protection to get busy, to get things done. But we must come back to that strong, wise self where we've got all our systems working if we want to navigate this however we are navigating this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and I, I, I love what you've just taken us through, those different ways of, of different you know parts of the community feeling different different types of um, heightened intensities that there is not their normal state, whether they're in surgical services, they're at home, more stressed, just need to protect the family in those kind of modes. Um, and I also loved how you said that, you know, even just taking that moment to reflect on exactly the, the honesty of this is, this is how I'm feeling and this is where it is in my body is such a powerful moment before you go, I've got to be different and I, I need to change my reality right now without the, the acknowledgement it's hard to get to that next step. Mm. Mm. I think the thing is, is that we're being thrown some of the biggest fears that you can have yeah. as humans. Mm. And globally. So this isn't just, you know, the, the great discomfort and pain and suffering that we had with fires or floods. This is on a universal scale. Mm. So you've got financial fear, mm. which is a big one you've got an invisible enemy that could harm your family, which is a big one. Yeah. You've got a possibility of not being able to access the things you need to survive, food, water, a big one. Yeah. So in a way, it is the greatest test in human history. Mm. Can we rise and be the most magnificent that we've ever been in the face of extraordinary fear? Mm. Uh, and I think if you're, if you're ready to turn the media off a little bit, that will give you more of an opportunity to come back out of a cortisol intensity in your own home mm -hmm. or in the work that you're doing if you're not being constantly fed this river of be anxious, be fearful, be afraid, be mm -hmm. afraid, be very afraid. Uh, because staying in that state will not allow you to be the most magnificent that you can be. Mm. If you want the greatest access to this brain, you need to not be in that space. If you want the greatest access to, to your immune system, you need to not be in that space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really, this, this virus is quite a fragile thing. Mm. If your immune system is powerful and on, and our immune system knows coronaviruses incredibly well. We've, we've all had many of them. Mm. And the greatest way for us as a humanity to rise in our immunity and remembered immunity of this new mm. virus is to get into a calmer place. The longer we stay in the state of um, panic, mm -hmm. the less likely it is that our immune systems can flower and go, ah, okay, I think I know how to get those natural killer cells and rip the arms off this thing. So <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and then, oh, oh, we're going to get in there and get the immunoglobulin like and crush this thing down. And then, boom, <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, the other thing, thing which I'd love to, to, you know, just to chat with you a little bit about is the impact on our children. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because even tiny children and a lot of the work that I'm doing at the moment and, you know, um, I've always done phone work or video work as an intuitive. I don't need to have somebody with me to be able to feel them. Yeah. 
uh, but I'm working with a lot of parents who are worried about their children and they go, well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you work on my child when my child can't communicate because they're only a year, year and a half? Yeah. But if I've got mum there, I can deeply feel what that child's feeling. Mm. And we can talk about cheeky ways that mum can enter her beauty and the child will feel held by that and therefore come back to their own calm beauty. Mm. Beautiful. Mm, because it is the core. The strongest members of the family set the tone. Mm. We think on the global scale, we've got all this fear and worry and, and strife and panic. You've got your own castle. Mm, true. The strongest, wisest presidents of those ca of your castle. Mm. How do you need them to behave? Are we going to be a Jacinta or are we going to be a Trumpy? <laughs> yes. I think I know <laughs> what I want to be. <laughs> So, so, you know, we get to choose our own um, universe within our own home mm -hmm. when we know how. So how do we do that? I mean, I can just describe a very simple tool that I use with people to bring them back to that cheeky sense of calm because mm -hmm. you cannot do this particular breath and remain contracted. Mm -hmm. And this breath will force the blood flow back into your amazing part of your brain. It'll force the blood flow back into the trunk of the body. And um, really just help you realize that your body's like this gorgeous racehorse. Mm -hmm. And it's running like a mad thing around the paddock right now. Yeah. But you're in charge of it. Yeah. Yes. So this tool will help you go, come on, sweetie, over here. And you're just going to give it a calm pat and bring it back to itself. And yeah. then it'll really just start to be quite lovely. You can climb aboard and take a nice ride. Nice. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, it's so yeah. playful. Would it be helpful to take you through that little exercise? Oh, yes, please. That would be amazing. Yes, please. So what I'll get you to do first is, you know, wherever you are sitting, if you're watching this and, and your beautiful self too, is, is just make sure your legs are across. And then I want you to melt your shoulders away from your ears because that's where we lift them up to protect us from random feelings of panic. Let them melt just for a moment and feel the gracefulness and the length through the neck. Now this breath that we're going to do does not allow you to stay contracted. It's a breath in for the count of five through the nose and then out for the count of five deep and open through the mouth <sighs> melt the bum melt the thighs melt the knees relax the hips keep going now making a little bit of sound with that breath is really powerful and i like to use two words which are oh yeah so i'll do this one with you let's breathe in together and out oh, oh yeah, yeah. Really melt those thighs, feel them. Feel your bum, feel your thighs. And what the other thing is you'll start to notice is greater blood flow coming down the arms now. Oh, yeah. Drama. Cheeky now across the chest. Cheeky now through the jaw, let the jaw melt a little more. Ears even feel cheeky. Oh, yeah. Lower back release. Nothing tight through the belly. Let your belly go. Now, particularly as women, we're made to tighten that sucker. Tighten in that belly. Not now, my lovelies. Let it go. Put a belly. <laughs> Let it go out. I want you to imagine your hips are like this. A gorgeous, beautiful island woman about to do the hula. With that beautiful half smile. Oh. It's in the belly melt. And one more. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's it. And just relax between those eyebrows. And then just let your eyes open. And just let me know, how does that feel? Yeah, I feel uh, more liquid on the, on sort of the outer fascia parts of my body. It just feels melted and liquidy and... Longer? Longer, yeah. yeah longer a great tool as well so 
the two parts of the body that contract up to protect us because our racehorse loves us. She wants to protect us from a flying sword or a weird barbarian or a biting tiger or a random plague. <laughs> so, so these come up. So you've always got to watch these and you'll watch the jaw. Mm. So cheeky with the jaw, cheeky with the shoulders. Okay. And the other part is the psoas muscles that run from belly button and around the hips. Now they tighten getting you ready to run or stand and fight. Mm. So if you can tell your beautiful racehorse, we're not angry with her, we're not upset with her, we just say, melt. It helps to place a hand on the thighs. Say, come on, sweetheart, melt. It's okay. And then saying these words, let's say them together. So I'll say them and then you say them. I am safe. I am safe. I know who I am. I know who I am. I was born for this. I was born for this. My body is strong. My body is strong. I've got things to do. I've got things to do. And it can feel a little bit emotional, can't it? Through the throat there. Mm. But take a breath, even place a hand just here over the chest. Take a big breath in for five. And out. <sighs> Saying these words, my lungs are fabulous. My lungs are fabulous. <laughs> Strong and healthy. Strong and healthy. My body remembers. My body remembers. A natural immunity. A natural immunity. To so many viruses. There are so many viruses. She or he is strong. She is strong. She knows. She knows. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. And the feeling is that from that center of strength, you feel how you feel a little bit more queenly now than, than that mad, I don't know, I don't know feeling. Mm. The reality is life is constantly changing. Mm. Always shifting. Always a hurdle here that you just, if you're a queen, you can get up and walk over it with a cheeky smile. But if every time a door comes up, we go, <gasps> mm. I'm a small little scared running around racehorse. This is not in charge. This queenly self is, which is leading out of this part of the brain. And it leads this body. So don't be cross with your body. Don't be angry with her when you lose your cool. Because there's a few, and I'm talking to lots of mamas at the moment going, I just lost it. I tried the homeschooling thing and, oh my God. <laughs> so much. I've, I've already sacked myself as the teacher. It's horrendous. <laughs> as a result and all these other bloody women online are like oh we're so amazing we've made finger puppets today and i'm just i can't do it <laughs> is it doesn't matter what you're teaching teach kids something you like doing mm. okay so if maths is not the goer mm. then go outside and rake the leaves up together and make up a stupid song um get them to wipe out the pot cupboard yeah. Go, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. Look at that. You put them all in and little cool lines. That's awesome. <laughs> um, it's please let go of the feelings of being a perfect teacher because you're not one. Mm -hmm. You're just in a castle with your wildlings, doing the best you can. Teach them what you know. Tell them stories about what you know. Um because that's the way forward and moving the body is really really important to getting yeah. our feelings out yeah um we can talk as much as we like but the feelings that sit in the racehorse and the racehorse needs to run them out sometimes yeah very true you can see your child going from green to orange to red <laughs> <laughs> and magdala's starting to fire and they're ah oh! that's when you go right 10 lengths from here to the laundry and God, I'm timing you. Kids love to be timed. Random. I know. It's weird. Yeah. It's, like, it's the other yeah. one. Incredible. And they're like, near, 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 back and forth to the water. Like, yeah. oh, 
<laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that is so true. My girls love to be timed too. <laughs> Isn't it? But it's something that any one of us can, can work with. You know, one of my clients was saying how she's not a natural kind of comfy mama. She's not that kind of mama. You know, she doesn't really want, like playing. She's like, I just, I can't do it. So I said, right then, what, what, what do you do like doing? And so she thought about it. I said, write down 10 things that you actually do like doing that you could teach your kiddo. Mm. Get them to help you. If you're all job focused and work focused, then give them their worksheet. <laughs> Crazy jobs. And look, it might be that they get a big bucket out, fill it full of soap and, and put all of the spoons in there. Seriously. It's that yeah. and a big towel. And they're washing these things and they're wiping them and they're like, oh, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. There's a lot of random things that you can come up with to play. Yeah. And um, in times like this, we don't, nobody has time for perfect. No. no perfect. True. Uh, the Instagram mama perfection thing. Actually, you know what? Yay, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Embrace our our little wrinkly bits. We get to embrace our little white streaks. We get to, you know, see who people are under all that stuff. Yes. You're bloody fabulous. It is. Yeah, it's it's coming back to something, isn't it? We're all coming back home to something in this. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think the heart of us is yes, we might be mummers or we might be, you know, lovers or best friends, or we might be on our own in this. Um and we may have had a job that we've been identifying in for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Okay. But there's also something else. This is your sense of purpose of what you are. Mm. Maybe, you know, just maybe you haven't had time to play with that yet. And this is your time. Mm. You know, I, I remember years ago, I was working with a guy that was, that was dying and he had um, an operable brain tumors. Mm -hmm. He was in a real grumpy state. He was a young man. He had young children. Mm. And he was in a really angry state. And so a friend had sent me over to sit with him. And for some reason, I felt really cheeky with him because he was gorgeous, you know. And I said, listen, brother, how many other men your age get to take six months off just to hang out with their family? And he's like, none of them. And I'm like, you lucky bugger. And he went, yeah. I said, tell me two cute things that your daughter did you know, done this week. And he's like, oh, it was so cute. She learned the song and, and we did this. I said, if you were out there being a merchant banker, do you think you would have seen that? He's like, no, no not at all. Yeah. The other thing I drew his attention to is I said, you see that enormous pile of empty Tupperware containers by the front door? Yeah. How many people love you? <laughs> How many people love you, do you think? Mm. And how many souls do you think you've touched? And I know it's a shit journey for you, brother, but there's probably about 50 families that have gone home hugging their children tighter, mm -hmm. being less revolting to each other, making new decisions about who they really are, what they really want, because of your love and because of who you are right now. Mm -hmm. so you're a master. You're a Yoda. You get to give people a lot of wisdom. Mm. and he came out of the, the grumpy want to throw things at the wall state and then he started doing something really cool is when people came and visited he'd sit them down and go this is what I have for you <laughs> <laughs> I have a bit of wisdom <laughs> come closer let me show oh gorgeous oh that's beautiful <laughs> We're not having that experience right now. Although, you know, I had 17 years ago, I was dying of cancer. And that's what woke me up to the reality of choosing life. Mm. And I think why it's been easier for me to be a little bit quite fearless in this situation, because I've faced death and so I'm not afraid of it. But most people out there are facing a fear of losing either mm. themselves or all their, their families. And that's, that's, that's a big fear. But in the midst of all that, what are you grateful for? What is bloody gorgeous? What are these cute moments where you forget for a moment and you laugh? Yeah. Are you letting yourself do that? Mm. Or are you 24-7 watching Mr. Trumpy? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Mm. Uh, oh, this is the latest. Um, instead of taking this opportunity where you can have this very special sacred time to be with the people that you love mm. uh, and talk about things that really matter. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Veronica. That just brings so much perspective in so many different ways to what, what we're all going through in our different ways and different feelings that are coming up. And you've just given so many beautiful tools and strategies to be able to use to help just bring us back to ourselves through breath work, through questioning, through understanding the perspective of what this could be for us, which is um, a pretty special gift in many, many ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we finish, any other little um, gems or any anything else that you wanted to leave with everyone before we wrap up? Um, yeah, I think a really great tool that, that we can work with now, because I think a lot of our suffering comes from a pain that we don't have what was over there before now. Mm -hmm. Worry about what's coming over here, which is mm -hmm. past and future. Yeah. Um, a way to stay present, a way to notice what's gorgeous in the day mm -hmm. is to see life in daytight compartments. Mm -hmm. So you're born brand new in the morning. Open your eyes and here I am, born, brand new day. This day's never coming back. This is utterly unique. Utterly unique. So you're born into the day and you might have in your head, there's four or five things that I'm going to do today. One of them might be getting the kid to clean the spoons, you know, which is crap. So give me half an hour to paint my toenails. <laughs> um, you know, random crazy jobs. Um, so you have four or five things that you're going to achieve today because I think for a lot of us, there's a sense of languidness when you're not achieving something. So mm. give me about four or five things that you're going to do and then simple things. But then you've also got whatever you're doing that's the doing, you need to also look out for four or five things that are cute. Mm in that day that were beautiful. And it might be a kid's smile, it might be the way a bird fluttered over, it, it could be the smallest thing. Because when you die to that day at night, when you get into bed at night and you let that day go, all of it go, as you know, it's never coming back, you think about those four or five cute things. Yeah. And then you've had a really good day. Yeah. We've been trying to believe that a busy day and an Instagram perfection day is the greatest day letting that go now and I, I'm, I'm glad about that so let's just look at what's beautiful um be cheeky when we're getting activated notice these mm. and take an all year breath before you're about to lose your cool at the kid that's climbing around the you know clothesline yeah. take a breath beautiful <laughs> Thank you so much, Veronica. Um, so appreciate your your presence, your energy, all the the gifts of your wisdom um, that you have brought to us today. So many so many insights there that I can, I, I know myself. I'm going to pick up and just run with a lot of what you've just said. So thank you very much, Veronica, for your time and um, your incredibleness. Oh, I've loved spending time with you, my beautiful sister. I can't wait to catch up with you again soon. Oh, me too. I can't wait for that time in person. Big hug coming your way. <laughs> right. Okay, I'll see you again very soon. Thank you, Veronica. Thanks. Bye. Bye.